Welcome to the World of Joan. So today, I got a question. Why does people prep? Prepping means being prepared. I don't think nobody's ever totally prepared for anything. And I think prepping is at different levels for everybody and different reasons. Some people, they prep because of, of the government. Some people prep because of the cost of living. Some people prep because they're just flat out tired of uh, buying things at the store that's got all these products in it. So, prepping does not mean that we see boogeymans around the corner. does not mean that we go around with our signs or our little aluminum hats or any of that crazy stuff. Now, there is people out there that gets a little crazy, but the reason most of us prep is because here we have seen so much or we've heard so much on the computers and the TVs and the radios and the newspapers that it's made us think different. It's made us think outside that box, think outside our comfort zone. We can't just bury our heads in the sand like an ultras does anymore. We worry about things. We get thinking about what about our children and our grandchildren? What about us? What would happen tomorrow if SHTF happens? Will I have enough food? Will I have enough for my medicines? Uh, will, will I have enough uh, to stay warm or to feed or clothes or whatever? You know, then we start thinking, well, what if these people come to my house and try to rob me? And you see this happening. People just breaking into the homes and people are going to jail because they shot someone in their house or shot someone in the front yard. But that person was going to hurt them. You know, so we begin to think outside that box. Like, what are we going to do? You know, do we have enough water? Do we have enough food? A three-day food supply for if a SHTF had rather it's natural man-made. Just like, you know, when the waters went bad or any of the other stuff. When, you know... Floods happen when mudslide happen, whatever, and you're trapped and you cannot get out. Do you have a three day supply of food to last you for three days? The thing is, they say have three days of food to be prepared. So, people who don't consider themselves as a prepper is actually a prepper because they was being prepared for three days of food. It does not matter what you do, a prepper is everywhere. Even though you may talk down about some of these preppers you see and that they're crazy and they're touching the head or their gains or whatever, the thing is, every day you prepare yourself to go out that door. Every day you prepare your meals. Every day you prepare to pay your bills. Every day you prepare for this and you prepare for that. So you are a prepper. So that means everybody is a prepper. One way or the other, we are all preppers. Just some of us start looking at things outside of the box. We start thinking about what if. Food cost is going up more and more every day. Food stamps has been cut for people who can't afford to buy food. They give you $200 worth of food stamps a month to live on for one person. Now what if, guess what, they don't even do that no more. It's $189 because they took $11 away from you. So you're looking at what? Maybe $50 a week if you're lucky. So what are you going to feed yourself with $50 a week for on food? Let's see. You can't afford the meat because a pack of meat is going to run you $7 or $8 or more. You can't afford uh, to buy milk because it's already going up. You know, used to powder milk. And chicken and crackers was one of the three cheapest things there was. But then when people started cooking with powdered milk, and these people would say, oh, wait a minute. We're going to go up on this milk. Even though it's costing us the same to process this milk as it did years ago, these people are all cooking with it now. And these recipes, these gourmet people and all these others on these TV shows are cooking with powdered milk. And it's causing companies to say, we're going to jack the price up. Because now it's a popular item. No it's not a poor person's stuff anymore. My mom 
used to take a gallon of milk, might put powder milk in it, and one can of evaporate milk in it, and that's what we had for milk. If we got fresh milk, a gallon of fresh milk, that was a treat. But now, it's considered a gourmet cooking thing. So, prepping is being prepared. Whether you are getting back to basis, and that just simply means you're trying to uh, start canning your own food, start raising your own stuff, you know, getting away from all this high-tech technology, whatever, using more solar energy, wind power, whatever, whether you're choosing to get off the grid totally and live off the grid, whether you choose to live partly off the grid, whether you've decided that you need to have a uh, protections in your home you know your w doors reinforced your windows reinforced you, you know you have ammunition on hand to keep on hand because you don't know what these people are going to do if, if SHTF happens and it's no different than every morning you getting up and you making those lunches for yourself and your kids it's no different than you getting everything lined up every day organized in that book in that book that organizer you have you got soccer game football game da -da, you are a prepper so think about it before you sit there and put other preppers down because guess what? You're a prepper. You're being prepared. The only difference between your type of prepping and the prepping of these people that you think are crazy is the fact is that they're looking outside of the box. They're looking at making sure they got food to last them and shelter to do with and a place to go. They're looking outside of that box. That does not mean make them crazy. But I'm going to tell you what. These people that look outside of the box, who has all these how-to-do books, who has, <coughs> excuse me, has all these how-to-do books, has everything else lined up, has backup water, backup this and backup that, are the ones you're going to look to when things go bad. They're not going to be so crazy to you anymore. They're going to be not the ones you don't want to associate anymore. You, those are the ones you're going to run to and say, take care of me, help me, help me. Because I don't know what to do. But you know what? There's a lot of them out there that won't help you. Because you've turned your backs on them so much. And you, these TV shows and things has made a lot of them, a lot of them look really bad. Now I'm not saying some of them don't get way out there in left field or right field or whatever. What I'm saying is, is that a prepper is you. We're all preppers. So what is a prepper? You take a look at yourself in the mirror. Because you are a prepper. So next time you decide to criticize other people for prepping, for putting up uh, their own food, for putting up at your lights or candles or whatever, or putting up at your toilet paper or etch or anything you best look back at it and you better look at yourself in the mirror because before you start keep putting them down you better look at yourself because you are a prepper even though you're not thinking outside the box but everyday life that you're doing you're a prepper we just think outside the box we want to survive we're tired of burying our head in the sand like the archers. We're tired of feeling like that we don't know one day next if we're going to be able to afford to have a place to sleep. Or we're going to be able to afford our lights anymore. Or we're going to have clean water to drink. We don't know what's going to happen one day to next. And if you watch TV, you hear about this stuff all the time about contaminations and pollutants and them talking about passing martial laws on this and changing that law and this and that law. It doesn't necessarily mean we're crazy. It just means we're thinking outside the box. So next time you, like I say, you look in that mirror and you rethink your thoughts because you are a prepper. You just haven't started thinking outside the box yet. When you start thinking outside that box, it can mean a big difference in your life. It may mean a big difference in your family life too. So from the world of Joan, 
be safe, be happy. Bless you all.